In these quick answer segments, I'm going to attempt to take large bits of information and distill them down into usable pieces. I'll try to do this without oversimplifying, just giving enough information for you to make changes today. I get a lot of questions on the topic of resonance. What is it? How can we use it in our voices? How can we sing with more resonance? Well, the first thing we need to understand is a little bit about how instruments work in general. Instruments have a power source, something that starts the whole thing in process. That is called the actuator or the activator. It activates what's about to happen. Then an instrument has a place where vibration occurs, the vibrator. Then it has something that amplifies or it reinforces the sound, and that is the resonator. Every instrument has one. This ukulele, for example, my finger is going to start the whole thing in motion. It's the actuator. The string vibrates. The body of the instrument is where the sound gets its characteristic sound. Imagine what would happen if I stuffed socks into this. It would not have such a vibrant quality. Now at a piano, there's a hammer inside that strikes the string. So that hammer, activated by my finger, will hit the string and then it will resonate against the soundboard. Think about a kettle drum or a timpani. The stick is going to start everything in motion. It's going to hit the surface of the drum, which will vibrate, and then it will resonate inside that big chamber. Again, what happens if you put a blanket in there? It changes the nature of the sound. So how does the voice work? The breath activates the sound. That air then passes through the vocal cords or the vocal folds, and then it's sent up into a resonating chamber. What's so unique about the voice, though, is that we have a lot of control over the shape of that resonating chamber. When you're playing a cello, the body of the cello doesn't change shape as we're playing it. But think about all of the variables inside the mouth and throat. So what we are most interested in as singers to develop resonance is how we can subtly change the space that we have control of to achieve the greatest resonance. We want to reinforce the vibrations that are coming off of the vocal folds. So what do we have inside our mouth and our throat that we can move? Let's yawn. <sighs> what moves? You should feel a stretch in the back of your throat, your soft palate lifts, your tongue is mobile. We don't really have control over the space, let's say, in our nose, but we do have a lot of control over the space in our throat and our mouth. We have control over what our tongue does. We have control over how wide and narrow the front of our mouth is. The same with the back of our mouth. Sometimes we'll use the term expanded sound when we're talking about building resonance. We're not directly talking about volume. We're not just saying sing louder. But it's really important to understand that when all of those vibrations line up the right way, when we're singing with an expanded sound, the sound does give an impression of being amplified. It has to do with the way that these complex sound waves reinforce each other. I'll get into that a little bit more deeply in another video, but I'd like to show you a visual example of what it looks like when our sound is expanded and full rather than narrow. Before we do that, here's the thing about studying and teaching voice. We can't see in here to figure out what's happening. We rely on a lot of imagery, a lot of imagination to get there. Now, sometimes those semantics can be really confusing. Sing forward, sing darker, sing purple, sing on gossamer wings. What does that all mean? What it really means is we need to experiment until we find the right way to do it. Do it with the guidance of a good coach, a good vocal teacher, a good director, or be your own best coach as you do a lot of healthy experimentation. What we experience as resonance actually has a lot to do with overtones and harmonics. Fortunately, we have some really great technology that can show the tones that are being produced. No sound is simple. When I sing this tone, that's not actually the only tone that's being produced. In addition to the note that you perceive as pitch, which we call the fundamental, there are a stack of tones on top of that called overtones. The fundamental is on the bottom, the overtones are on the top. Taking all of those together, we call them harmonics. 
we can visualize those harmonics in an app like TE Tuner. One of the most pure tones we can listen to is called a sine wave. It has a strong fundamental and not very many overtones. Now, if I were to sing that same note, it would have more harmonics because of the timbre and resonance of my voice. We can do a lot with the color or timbre of our voice just by changing the space. And if I change the resonating space inside my mouth and throat, the harmonics will change. Some of the best ways we can make sure we're singing with resonance, making sure that our soft palate is medium high and relaxed, that our throat is open with a little bit of yawn space, and that our tongues are free of excess tension and out of the way. I hope that gives you a little bit more information about what we mean when we say sing with resonance. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Take care.